double. Obviously, 15k is double, but it's close. So we're going to see what it's like. Um, it's a very easy grind spot for today's standards, so uh, you don't need nearly as much gear as I'm going to run. I'm going to run my down attack lightstone set, which does require a strike, but you could probably run demi-human if you wanted a cheaper set. If you have a blade set for ranger specifically, that's okay, because you'll end up using a lot of Waltz of Wind, which doesn't have crit rate. So you could do that too. That's the one I'm going to use. And then the crystals, this is the crystals I'm going to run. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. You don't, I guess I could run more AP, because I don't really need the Vipers, because I don't miss. But to be fair, everything else is super expensive. So just, yeah, <laughs> run what you can. Um, Drop rate, I have 212% right now. Earlier when I grinded, I killed a C7 Calamity boss so I could get 20% drop rate for three hours. But to be honest with you, that was too much effort, even though I one-shot it. Um, so we're not going to do that. So when I run the... It's not... Yeah, it's daytime. So when I when I pop the 50 million tent buff, we'll have 262% drop rate. Well, actually, 0.5 extra because of the node. I don't have the node invested, but any node you don't have invested is 0.5 by default, I believe. Yeah, 0.5. Oncado Coast is the node? Wait, what? Oh, connected node. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, what's Histria is which node? Oh, no, it is Oncado. Yeah, it is Oncado. Oncado Coast for Achman. Ha! Huh. That's weird. I didn't know that. I guess they updated that a while ago, and I haven't really checked since then. Where's Oncado Coast? Here. This is the node you need, I guess. All right. They nerfed the Agris here. No, they might have done, but it's still an Agris spot. I'm also going to run out of my church bus before this stuff starts. But Oh, these are my skill add-ons, by the way, if anybody cares. I didn't actually change them. This should be okay, though. Waltz of one Wind having crit rate, I think, is important. You want down attack damage because you knock the mobs on the floor. You could also run Stiff and Resistance for the stupid-ass Kudum-looking mobs that spawn out of the ground, I guess. But we're going to also run... We're going to run Simple Cron, Frenzy Draft of Corruption, Draft, uh, and then Bracing Spirit Perfume. Although you don't need to run that specifically. You can just run normal Frenzy and shit. Okay, this is the rotation we're going to try. I don't really know how good it is. Pets are out. All right, so we just need the tent buff and to start. I can't wait to drop a compass piece that I don't need. This is the easiest one to drop for the compass, though. Oh, yeah, I'll put the shit on the screen. Hang on. Since if I'm going to upload this to YouTube, I guess people will want that. Mm -hmm. Edit UI. Save as preset 2. Wait, you can't see that, can you? Uh, I'll p can you see that? Save as preset 2. I'm just going to move it down. Hang on. I'll move it here. Then you should be able to see it. Yeah, that's fine. Let me just add this as item count. Okay, it's on the, the right hand, or left hand side, sorry. No, right hand side. <laughs> I don't really know how to do this in a circle. It feels like it's kind of like clunky, but. You know what's a shame is that Succession couldn't just easily one shot these with Descending Current. It would on cooldown, I think, but once you actually burn the cooldown of Descending Current, I think that you wouldn't be able to one shot them anymore. Which is a shame. Those, those are the things that can stiffen you. Of 
Congrats to the partner. Restore of your crystal. Guildmate had computer tell him no. If your guildmate couldn't restore his crystals because he's already restored more than two. Anybody can do that. It's not a partner exclusive privilege. Hmm. Well, I mean, maybe he wrote an angry ticket. I don't know that that would prevent it. Well, it depends what's in there. I suppose if it's really angry and, like, spewing racist hate or some random thing, then that definitely might have done that. But I, I wrote kind of like a, a meme ticket, but, you know, I was clear about what I wanted, and I haven't restored a crystal yet this year. So as the person said that answered my ticket, I have one more chance to restore crystal before the reset, which I assume is January 1st. But yeah, you're only allowed to do two crystals per year. Unless you lose a crystal when the server goes down. But the server has to go down. Like, people have tried to do it and not have it count towards a restoration when they've disconnected. But... Even if you can prove that your internet went down or that the server went poopy for that second or think you can prove it, you know, they probably won't do it. It's only when, like, it's definitively obvious that the server just, like, literally shot the bed, I think. What was partner privilege was that speed of response Probably. Or maybe they're just really fast at the moment. I don't know. Restore would not be worth it for the 500. Oh, they, the fragment? Nah, dude. Only tier. I wouldn't even restore the... Well, I'd probably restore a crystal, actually. Maybe. Yeah. That depends. If you plan on, like, getting it up to a tier, I don't know. I. It's nice to have them in the back, you know? Like, oh, if I die again, at least I have another chance to restore this crystal. So, so far, I've been here for six minutes, and I have 3,700 trash. So, yeah, you got a lot of trash. Red shard, that's unluck. Kafaru. Easy back attack one shot. I'm hoping I don't have to use any maids for the scrolls in an ancient language. Because it makes it oh actually no, I don't have any in my market. It should be fine actually. If I have to do that, I have to do that. We just have to add that up afterwards. Is that 500 million per hour in trash loot? Oh, wasn't looking at my cooldown. I wish I had a bigger aggro limit. Perhaps it's play tamer.
One of the nice things about the dash becoming the PvE iframe instead of evasive explosive shot is when I dash from pack to pack, if there is an Aquaman trap, I should iframe the CC. Uh, not that one, though. Wait, that... <laughs> that hits you with a first CC, then you get a follow-up CC. That's unlucky. Not worth running resistances for. And nobody should be under threat of death, which is where usually you'd run it. Is this worth killing this Afro? Wait, where is it? Oh my god, he's in the little corner. I'm not sure that's worth it. Archers used to be S tier here. I wonder if they still are. I could also see it being like an Awakening Nova God Spot or something. Suck Megu will do well too because the AoE is so huge. Zerk as usual. I guess anybody would be okay. It's just some will be more efficient as is tradition. I meant to go this way. Oops. Well, I mean, I'm, ta I'm talking about, you know, Succession Zerker, which has fat AoE <laughs> and huge mobility as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Awakening was changed, so... get out. Uh, I've responds quite a lot, to be honest with you. That was a more convenient spawn for him, though. Don't mind that so much. Back in the old days, before many of you played this game, when Valencia was the most recent content, Achman and, of course, History were very big mysteries to people. And what people used to do back then was because this grind spot was so difficult, and for context, keep in mind it's never been changed. The spot itself has never been weakened. People used to grind this spot with five people, and it would take ages to down the mobs. But... They grind it with five people. And it was kind of like a big thing when we saw that Tongrad had been dropped for the first time. Tongrad earring, that was. No one had dropped a necklace just yet. And uh, back then, as another tidbit of history, Tongrad on the EU and NA servers at least, this was before I think even Southeast Asia, MENA, South America even existed. So I, I don't know anyone else playing the game in English wouldn't have known because it would have been too early, but um, Tungrad used to be called Tungrade, 
And then they remove the E. Not that long afterwards, actually, but... But to think these mobs have never actually been softened up. We, set, we had... The gear at the time required us to grind this spot with five other people. I remember it was kind of a cool thing, too, because you were, like, there with your guild. And you were, like, a top-end guild at the time. You know, it's like, oh... We're arranging a party to go to Auckman, five-man Auckman. It's like kind of a cool thing. It's like going on an adventure. And if you went in like history, it was like really scary and dangerous, and like you see if you could take down a mob. Fogans used to be like that too. Desert Fogans? No. Now, they were always very easy to kill. But they did buff them a lot. Um, to make... They had to buff the desert in Valencia a lot. Because people wouldn't leave pirates alone. Because pirate, pirates was so much more efficient than Valencia was. So they had to buff Nagas, Fogans, Gahas especially. You know, that became a big spot. Yeah, that we lost we lost quite a lot of group content. You know, they added other stuff, but you know, we used to we used to grind spots that weren't designed to be group grinded in the way you might consider them now. Um, we used to grind those spots as groups because you had special deals, which was efficient to grind with. So you could grind with a group of five people, even on spots that weren't designed, like Pirate Island and Sawsons. You could grind with five people. Um, which actually was fun because back then people weren't so afraid of PvP, so it led to a lot of GVGs and things like that, and that was always fun. Um, obviously, you don't really get that now, but the group spots we have now are designed to be group spots. And there are not many of them left, really, and they haven't added new ones other than the Dekia spots, which I don't count um, because they were already group spots. They just changed how you kill the mobs. They're not new. Ulakita is new, and they're not group. Cyclops, you could argue, is a new grind spot, not not a group spot, though. Yeah, as pirates developed later, many people gained enough gear that they could very comfortably kill it on their own. They didn't need five people. But the equivalent of like what you consider now to be, I suppose, closer to Tavala Timmy's. Back then, they would challenge like a high gear player, being like, "Oh, we're five people," <laughs> and you'd be like, "Okay," <laughs> and then they just get farmed. Good times. Another thing we we missed from the OG Valencia days was gatekeepers, which is where all the top end guilds would compete to kill gatekeepers on different servers, and that was huge money. You know, because you could drop such massive loot, such as seraph necklaces. You'd also get a ton of scrolls written in ancient language. They opened the gate, those fools. Solo, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, Zeroy, who I can't remember which one of the two he is in the guild, the Zeroy in Twitch chat, was uh, talking about playing Succession Sage as his main character. And I said that we had one because he said he didn't see one in the Node War. I just said you weren't at the Node War. So, if he's still here, Zeroy, I don't know. That's the person to follow. What am I doing? Um, I'm testing it. It got buffed, so I, you know, I make videos on grind spots. I don't actually grind for myself. I figured instead of spending an eternity rendering a one-hour high-quality video of Achman. 
<laughs> we'll just do a stream highlight instead, which is significantly less work for me. I don't have to do anything. My PC doesn't have to die rendering a video that's over an hour long. Yeah, that's radiation. Yeah. So he's he plays Succession Sage. He just wasn't at yesterday's Node War for some reason. I think because he hates Rudims or something. So get, give him a follow if you want, and you can watch him play Sage at certain things. I don't think he always plays Sage in PvE, though. I died earlier at City of the Dead and lost the Guren. Am I on Windows 11? No, I have, I still have Windows 10. It looks like black and video window on OBS. Are you saying the OBS isn't capturing the game? It finds the game on source but it's mm, uh, yeah I don't know sometimes there's some weird setting that'll fix that alternatively you could just stream your monitor a lot of people do that I don't know how because like I feel like I'd open up something like login details I'd, I'd reveal some like password information if I did that I don't know Look what happens. Slorpy got some gear and now he's clapping. I tell him I won't grind Turo's outside of a drop event, and he mad at me and the rest of the guild and the world. I have nothing special I should do before I timepiece. I transfer all the gear over after. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, just make sure the character you're currently playing is, like, level 61, preferably. Maybe even 62. Because it just means you have to do less grinding. Um... But yeah, no, nothing, nothing else really. Have you have you seen how cracked Shy looks at the? Uh Dekia Cyclops. Yeah. Misty Hayes like just makes them just like get farmed so hard. Maybe I should retag my shy. No, actually, like, it has very little mechanics, basically. It's just you have to prevent the Cyclops, like, consuming some boars for HP recovery or something. And um, you basically don't need resistances. I think there's, like, one thing that CCs, but that you can dodge or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Hugh has a video on it. If you go to Hugh's YouTube channel, he has a video on it. You can check it out. It, look, it looks pretty decent, yeah. I'm just worried, though, that because obviously I have evasion, I'll just get fucking annihilated, though. I hope that it, like, pumps Dawn Earrings on the market so it make my Dawn Earring grind cheaper. Yeah, according to Hugh, you basically don't need resistances, and you don't really have to do special mechanics all the time. I mean, it's still, like, dangerous, like, still, like, usual Dekia threat stuff, you know, dangerous mobs. But what's better at endgame, Valkyrie or Warrior? Are we talking, you want PvP? Oh, PvE? Oh, man, I don't know. Um, Valk is about to get some PvE buffs, so I would lean that way, but I genuinely don't know for sure when it comes to PvE. I could talk to PvP, but... Yeah, we, have, we, have, we have, just have to see how the new Valk buffs play out that we'll get next week. Yeah, but you can't say that, Draggy, when the Valk's about to get, like, crazy buffs. For PvP, Awakening Valk, hands down. Just brings way more to the table. All right, so we're overweight, so I'm going to put... 20. It took me 20,000 trash to get overweight, but I have stupid amounts of weight limits, so... Let's uh, track it again. Item count. There you go. I mean, the Valk training thing is only useful for people to tag Valk for, like, potion grinding and shit. Like, the buffs it got, even though that's removed, are way better. And any Valk main would be really happy with the changes, I think. 
Oh, uh, shit. I came... I went through the wrong door, I think. Oh, wait, no, I did not. No, no, I went through the right door. Never mind. Gaslit myself for no reason, though. Like, they got all that new mobility, too, in PvP that they didn't need because the class is already too fast. And now it gets to be a, like, freaking rocket ship, bro. Like... What are you doing in Aquaman? I got buffed, so I'm just going to see how much money it is. I make a lot of different grinding spot videos to see how much money it is on Ranger. Um, some of them are high-end spots and some of them are low-end spots, so I try to cover everything. So, if, you know, if a new player is like, hey, where should I grind with this low-end gear? This is a low-end grind spot, so if it's good money, I can say, hey, you could try Aquaman. What's up, Moose? Well, they complained about being a wheelchair back when they were the second strongest class in the game. I mean, you could argue that Valk is, Awakening Valk is the strongest class in the game in PvP right now. Like, Draconia is obviously like a god class at the moment, but in terms of overall what they bring to the game and to your raid, you know, it's got to be Valk hands down. Obviously, a Draconia will, like, excrete ultimate weapons, but <laughs> in terms of, like, the overall contribution to a, a, an actual full-on raid fight, you know, Valk is doing more. Drakani is just an outrageously survivable fragging class with stupid levels of mobility, you know, and self-healing. But, like, in terms of what is actually being brought to the raid, you know. What the hell is a hidden dark energy? Wait, what? Is this, is this, is this an event? Has it always had this? It's weakening monsters nearby. Oh, that's fucking great, isn't it? Yeah, thanks for weakening the monsters, man. Let's appreciate that, dude. Cool mechanic. Yeah, so anyway, so just, just going back, I mean, Valks have always complained. Like like I said, there was a time when Awakening Mystic was the strongest class in the game and Valk was second. I mean, there was a time when Valks were complaining when they still had fucking lingering super armor and they were a god class, but like most of them didn't know what they were doing, so it didn't matter. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with Valve. It just brings so much to the raid. Or any group fight, really. It doesn't even have to be a node war. Like, having a Valk is so huge. You get a class that can survive ridiculous amounts of punishment. It's only really beaten on DR by, like, Suck Nova. But unlike Suck Nova, has a self-heal that also heals other people in super armor. Has PA. Has a giga party-wide accuracy buff. Has a vacuum, a very powerful ultimate. Despite being so tanky, it has an incredible amount of bursts. Now it has, well, it already had good move mobility, especially when the Valks know what they're doing, but now it's just an obscene level of mobility burst. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Yeah, that, that, that's being nerfs Grizzles next week. I mean, anybody playing Valk for the Valk train, quote-unquote, is going to be sad, right? But let's be real. Those people weren't actually maining Valk. They just had them tagged for potion grinding and shit. So I just, do I kill this and just I get a little bit of, like, loot? Yeah, okay. I mean, I guess it's worth killing.
you haven't seen Valks on AOS. Yeah, but if I can cook you for a second, that's probably because you have Timmy ratings. Yeah, you don't you don't have to tag Valk, I guess, for that. Yeah. I mean a lot of high gear players literally have alt characters with like basic levels of gear and like tet black stars to grind some things, you know. Cause why not, right? If you have a ton of gear, what's you know, 14, 12 billion, whatever it ends up being to you. Especially if it's a succession class. Um, I have, yeah, lots of guys on Ranger. I uh, type exclamation mark Ranger in the chat. I'll bring them all up. I think I might have, like, destroyed Z-Roy. I'm sorry, man. But if you get higher ELO, you'll see loads of Valks. People do a crazy thing in the low ELOs because they, you know are not quite so sweaty and they do something crazy which is called play the class that they enjoy not what's photom I had to move XP from my grinder somewhere and I picked a valve because you can't go wrong with her and you always be needed my second option was Draconia but it's one big nerf in all Draconias have gone like before um yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like Valk's going to receive any significant nerfs after they literally just buffed her. So, well, you, you can't go wrong. It is, like, the overall most useful class to have in any large-scale fight, or even small-scale fight, like I said. It has everything you need. Everything. So. Uh, this is Awakening Ranger. That's because this is the coolest class in the game, Hachi. Uh, the APM is extremely high, which is, in my opinion, unfortunate for PvE, um, but in PvP, it's very fun to have high APM. If you're interested in Ranger, I have a lot of Ranger content on my YouTube channel. If you type exclamation mark Ranger. Well, Ranger's last buffs, they lasted two days. 
And then they ended up reverting almost everything they did and adding stamina nerfs. So they started off buffing it <laughs> and then decided, nah, actually, let's remove everything we just did and then layer it with stamina nerfs. Two days. That took two days. And they'll let... I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't want any buffs because I'm quite... I have quite a... What I would say is a very reasoned opinion on classes in BDO. I don't want my own class to be buffed, which everybody else always seems to want their class to be buffed to ridiculous levels, no matter how strong it already is. Ranger was fine. In anything, Ranger needed nerfs because I think that every class in this game needed nerfs. Like, the power creep, I just think, has gotten to an obscene level in the game. So I would see every class being nerfed, including my own. <sighs> that doesn't seem to be the direction Pearlabis wants to take. So what is annoying is when your class does get a buff and then immediately they nerf it. Then they add nerfs that, like, we didn't need because, like, I'd rather them not touch the class in the first place at that point. So they nerfed our stamina a lot. Removed all the damage buffs they added. Um... And I was like, why did you even touch it then if you're just going to nerf it? Like, And again, what was annoying was that it only took them two days to do that. They added a global lab. The global lab was delayed to Monday. So usually we have global labs on Friday. They delayed it to Monday, released the ranger changes to Korea two days later on Wednesday. And by then it had already been nerfed. And then they nerfed it again a week after that. So yeah, I mean... Like, I'm, I don't want buffs because, again, I, d I just think the power creep in the game is outrageous. But nobody else seems to care. Everybody's like, oh, yes, please buff my overpowered Photom class. Or please don't nerf my overpowered Photom class all the time at the very minimum. Um, and then you bring up but maybe your, a class needs nerfs. And they're like, ah, yeah, but what about this other overpowered class? It's like, yeah, that shit needs nerfing too, bro. But, like, you know, it's always a whataboutism with people. At this point, so, like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Just ask for buffs no matter what. This that's that's the lesson that I got out of it. So, like if you're reasonable and be like, you know, when they buffed Ranger Awakening, they buffed the damage, and I was like, why did you buff the damage? The damage on Ranger Awakening was already fine. We are a combo class that can execute set combos. The damage buffs doesn't change that because it doesn't allow a Ranger to actually deal damage in super armor. So, what is the point of a damage buff? She doesn't need it. Anyway. That was the stance. And so what did Perlobus do? They nerfed that damage twice that they'd given us. And then decided, let's go back and shit on our stamina. They actually annihilated Awakening Ranger's stamina, which was not something they needed to nerf because Awakening Ranger is already bad on stamina before they nerfed it. So that was frustrating because like, I didn't ask for these changes. I wasn't sitting here being like, please buff my class. My class sucks. Please buff. Like, I I didn't care. My thought Ranger was fine. I did think that she needed some PvE buffs at the time. And she, she, to be honest with you, she needs it now because if they keep buffing classes, even the good ones at PvE, so yeah, sure, buff it. But the fact that I didn't want any buffs, and they ended up buffing it anyway, and then changing their mind and making it worse, I was not happy. But yeah, so now on, I'm just going to say, oh, wow, cool, thanks for the deserved buffs, wink. You know, because like, that's what everybody else does. Like, where are the Valk mains saying, wow, we really didn't need this giga-boosted mobility buff you just gave us? Where are they? Where are the Zerkers that are saying, wow, thanks for buffing our class, but we didn't need it? You know? Sorry. So anyway, so that's my, uh, that's my now new philosophy now, is just ask for everything. Because if you don't, your class gets left behind as they continue to buff things because Pearl Abyss is not going to nerf things. I wanted them to nerf classes, including my own. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. If they were going to go down that route, they would have already started months ago and instead they've just been buffing everything, including classes that never needed buffs in the first place. So literally just ask for buffs. No matter what class you play, ask for buffs because everybody else does and if you don't, you get fucked. Jose, thank you for the, the resub, dude. I appreciate that, buddy. Well, that, that's, Drake, you bring up the perfect thing. It's always what aboutism. If there's something even slightly better, even though your class is overpowered, if there's something slightly better, oh, what about this class? Why can't we be as good as this class? 
So yeah, classes that were already really top tier in PvE, looking at like Succession Wusa, which should have been nerfed. Do you remember when the Suck Megu nerfs came in? And my chat was full of Megus asking for sympathy about the fact that they were being nerfed. Because Megu, uh, Wusa hadn't been nerfed either. And yeah, I was like, Wusa does need to be nerfed, but your class needs to be nerfed too. My Awakening Ranger in Sakraya was pulling 9,000 at most, 8,000 more typically, trash per hour in Sakraya on a level 1 loot scroll. Megu, pre-nerf, 13,000 with less gear. A seasonal Megu can pull 9,000 trash as Sakrai. Or could pull 9,000 trash, not anymore. Now, a Megu with slightly less gear than me can pull 10,000 trash per hour in Sakrai with less gear than me. And they wanted sympathy from me because their class wasn't always doing as much as Sakwusa. But that's that's the problem. You have this power creep continues to go up because it's never good enough, you know. And then what will happen with them power creeping and buffing classes instead of nerfing the the top echelon of classes is that they'll overdo it on one of the classes, which they kind of have. But they'll overdo it. Let's pick a class that sucks at PV, in my opinion, right? Succession Corsair deserves to be buffed. Um. It isn't a class that would be better off if other classes would just be nerfed. It just sucks. It's not good enough, right? What will happen is they will buff eventually Succession Corsair. And, and what will probably happen, no MPA, is they'll overbuff it so much that it becomes the new s -tier grinder. And then we go back in our little loop, and it'll be Suck Wusa mains being like, what the fuck? Suck Corsair is 5% more trash per hour than me at these grind spots. Please buff Suck Corsair. That's what'll happen. Or Suck, uh, suck Wusa. That's what'll happen because people can't, like, be objective. Ha everything has to be buff, 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 buff. We end up with, like, the ridiculous power group. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Yeah, I'm testing Aquaman. It was buffed, so I, like, usually I record these hours, and then I render it, and then I upload it, and it's kind of a hassle, so I'm just going to upload the stream highlight of me grinding this spot so people can see how much money per hour it is. Um, they also get to enjoy my various rants, I think, so. Check the reward bundle. I'm pretty sure it's a season shit, isn't it? Oh, it's Kafra's level 3 bundle. Hmm, okay. I mean, I can't open it because it'll dilute my research. How much so far per hour? How much what? I can't tell you anything per hour. I've not grinded more than an hour yet. I haven't grinded an hour yet. 13 minutes, I can tell you. Hopefully, we don't run out of inventory space. If you were a player with, like, no maids... Wait, it's this way. Um, if you were a player with no maids, you'd have to sell your trash consistently to the NPC. Oh my god, I hope I didn't have any trash in Valencia. No, I didn't. Okay, thank god for that. Um, you'd have to sell your trash to the NPC that's just outside the rotation, and then you'd have to combine all the scrolls because you'd never be able to have the inventory space. Why would they nerf it? Because it's significantly less effort than what you just said. Look, I'll, I'll be real. Like, I don't mind things being easy, especially on low-end spots, but what Valtrain was, was, like, a step too far, in my opinion.
You literally could hold down the inputs and look away and just direct the class in a direction with no resource costs. I mean, it was a step further than what you're insinuating there. If it was as easy and effective as what, you know, what did you say, Musa or Mewa? Well, first off, Mewa's AoE is like horrendous, but um, then people would have played those classes as well. But there is a reason people only picked Valk for that kind of grind. And, it, and it's not because of Underboob, although that would have been a good reason. for disabled gamers. Mm, I disagree. Um, I think that that, that just gets abused, though. If something is simple and ineffective, that's different, right? Like, I don't really care about Sorks running around at Gahaz with overweight horses and spamming AoE while on a horse, because that shit's not effective. Valve training was not only the most easy thing you'll ever see in your life, but it was also incredibly effective. And that should never be the case. And besides, disabled gamers can play with a controller. They don't have to play with a keyboard. I don't, mi I don't mind there being accessibility, but when the accessibility is like ridiculously effective, Then, uh, then I have an issue. Well, I literally just said that, got, uh, Tracer, but yeah. That's where I don't have an issue with it, Like as I said. was that That's fine, because doing that is very ineffective. It's very lazy, and I have no problem with it, because it doesn't like outperform everything else that is more effort. Well, yeah, but Ranger, I mean, Ranger Walt spam is probably even less effective because it's so slow. The Val the Valk training was, didn't cost any resources and moved incredibly quick while killing all the mobs. If you did that with Ranger, you'd, well, you might, I mean, you'd have to make sure you mitigate the mana issues, but um, it should just be hella slow. <laughs> So that's fine if you want to do that. I don't have a problem with that. It's like anything that is super easy but is not effective, it just is easy. I'm fine with that as long as it's not actually AFK grinding. It's okay as far as I'm concerned. But with the Valk training, it was more than just easy. It was like... <laughs> All you'd have to do is put like weights down on your keyboard, watch a movie, and just direct the Valk in a pointed direction and manage the weight at the end. I mean, if, if something gets to the point where, like, you're basically not playing the game, you're playing Throne and Liberty, and it's really effective, then I just think we should have a problem with it. Personally.
You have a better memory than me, zombie. I don't specifically remember any, like, fighting anyone in specific here. Oh, I remember killing Odds' pilot. Sorry. Odds is... Wait, what did he say? It was friend. But I don't remember anyone else in specific. You realize that's an oxymoron, a contrast in terminology. It's okay to be easy, but not if it's effective. What? Wait, I don't understand what your point is. Sorry, can you tell me what you're arguing? You're mad at the terminology I'm using, or...? I, like, I mean, I can give you another example. I think Suck Guardians grinding AFK at Stars End Towers was also bad. It was not only easy, it was legit AFK grinding, but it was also incredibly effective. That's where there's a problem with it. Although AFK is, like, never okay, even if it is ineffective. So I suppose maybe that's the worst example, but... You're so close to being AFK while grinding wheel... Uh, Falk train that, you know. Uh, I just remembered uh, you were, you outgeared me compared to the rest back there, and it made it really hard for me. And you played so damn good. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I like I said, I, rem I remember killing odds a few times. Because uh, I realized he was, uh, you know, <clears throat> not actually on the character. Um, I don't. I know I had PvP here, a couple Arsha fights and things like that, and some War Target fights too. But I don't. I don't remember. But I, I think being upset about the Valk training thing is an example of the problem we have in the game. Where you have to think in a... It's difficult for people to, I think, to think things fairly and think, Oh, why is this being removed? That's unfair. You know, when, like, it probably should be removed, right? <laughs> And, and, and immediately, the first thing you came up with was, what about this or this or that? I mean, your examples weren't very good, but sometimes people will have fine examples, but then it's like, yes, that should, should also be removed. But oh, they're complaining about Mewa and Musa doing the same thing as a Valk train is both disingenuous or not understanding remotely what it's like to grind on those two classes compared to a Valk train, but also like, Again, what about ism? So if they were truly a problem, they should also have been nerfed, but they're not. But if they were... Yeah, I don't, I don't blame people for doing the Valk train. Like, I, I also don't blame people for, like, photon tagging in PvE, by the way. I, like, I, I give people hard times for, like, photon tagging in PvP. But, like, if you want a photon tag in PvE, I literally have zero problem, and I totally get it. PvE is not fun. Well, I mean, some people do actually enjoy grinding, I think, but, like, I don't. So I, I get it, man. Like, you want to play something that's overpowered, as long as it's not, like, breaking any rules, you know, like, AFK grinding Star's End, you know, I, I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. Valk training, go for it. Like, as long as it's in the game, man, go for it. As long as you're not macroing, which I know some of them were. As long as you're not doing that, like, who cares, you know? That doesn't mean prohibition let it stand, you know? They shouldn't let classes have such disparities in PvE. But that's not your fault. Use it until they remove it, as far as I'm concerned. But you can't also be annoyed when they do, when it absolutely should have been removed. Like... <laughs>
Suck Sage is probably the class I fear the most in tier 2 at the moment. Well, I mean, obviously Drakani, of course, but... What's my opinion on Mystic in PvE and PvP? Um, I don't really have any opinion. I, I, I don't know. Seems like right now Awakening Mystic is in a pretty good state when it comes to grinding. She's been buffed quite significantly in that sense and is performing extremely well. Um, I don't really know. I mean, obviously Suck, Suck Mystic was all the rave for quite a while and I think it's still really, really good. Still has some outrageous mechanisms. I don't really know what was improved enough PvP wise for Awakening Mystic to comment on it, to be honest with you. Wait, there's another quest here. You kill 4,000 mobs, you get 60 memes. What the fuck? These quests are cracked. All right, that is that. Uh, it's about 20,000 aggress. I guess if you're playing a class that goes zoomies with big AoE, it's probably more, maybe 30k if you're like a really good class for it. Um, okay, let's, uh, ooh. ooh. Y'all got any of them scroll written in ancient language? Uh, let's go Shakatu. Uh, well, then a new player would have to combine the scrolls actively, and then they'd be okay. Um, why? Wait, why does that make it pay to win the scrolls? I don't understand that connection. Wait, let me. I have to make sure I don't have any scrolls. I don't think I do. No, we're good. We're good. I'm not counting the scrolls in my inventory. Like, hell no. I didn't get any tongue grad. I don't know if that's unlucky, though. Maybe. The total trash. We're looking at. There we go. 44,667. You don't get that many inventory slots. As, yeah, I, I literally just. Gave you a solution for that. You guys don't listen to me. I swear to God. All right. Um, let me just log in to Garmoth. Uh, we want Grind Tracker. All right, we're ready to see how much Ackman was. Keep in mind that I would have higher drop rate than your average player. But the gear requirements are not high, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Um, right, so we uh, got 44,667. Oops, 67. It's 536 million in trash. 
Obviously, it's a bit more, but the 50 million tent buff has already been counted, so keep that in mind. It is more money than that in trash, but tent buff means it's a little bit less. Uh, we got 80... Oh, no, 76. 76. 87. Uh, now the scrolls. Uh, we got a total of... 54 scrolls. So 54... Okay. Um, oh, man. Okay, so much random shit. Ooh. Bro, let me move. Why, why is it resisting me so much? Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, we got six. Uh, six. Fourteen. We didn't get any of those, sadly. Wait, what's going on here? Okay. Five. Um. Then fifty. Uh, no spirit dust? Oh, three spirit dust. Let's go. Uh, I don't know how many of these got, but they don't sell anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um. We got five. We got... One of these. Uh, any of these? No? Really? Okay. Uh, one. Okay, so 802 million I made without... Oh, Agris turned on. Yes, total. We t I used Agris. We used 20, we'll just put 20,000 in. I don't usually inf put that information in. All right, what's this drop rate listed as? 302%. We did not have that... We had 260%, I believe. Yeah, I think 262% is roughly what I had. So... Is that everything? I did everything, right? It has some like crazy daily quests. Like, I got this thing, which gave me 40 Kafras, but I won't count that. So, yeah, 802 million. Um, so yeah, not bad. Not bad. Um, definitely on superior mobility classes with big AOEs, that would be a better performance. Although obviously, would therefore consume more aggress.